Hey guys, welcome to Rotorite. I'm Bubby FPV, and today we're going to be building the Moxie Pro Spec. This is basically my signature build, the exact components all the way down from the tune to everything that I fly. So let's get into it. For the frame, we obviously have the Moxie frame. This is my signature freestyle frame. I designed this frame for maximum durability. Some key features of this frame are really wide arms because I think that wide arms provide more rigidity to the frame, so it might make it easier for tuning. When I'm in a concrete bando or some sick office park, I want to be able to know that I can full spin my quad and not have to worry about breaking an arm or something. One of the key features of this frame is definitely the sideways standoff in front of the frame. I did this so I can have a GoPro mount mounted to it because with other frames that are mounted just by the screws, GoPro mounts would always rip off. And I think also having camera plates really helps with just rigidity of the frame. I designed this to have 3D prints to hold the FPV camera because I just think that having something soft to hold the FPV camera provides some more durability for it as it's not hard mounted to something. So in a crash, there is maybe a little bit of give, so I'm not cracking the camera case. For the motors, I'm running the Hype Train Ledrim motors. I really love these motors. They are super durable. And yes, I'm still flying 4S. This is the Foxier Reaper stack. and. Honestly, I used to fly individual ESCs because I could not find a Ford one that was durable enough for me. But guys, this ESC has held up to all of my crashes. I've had these for multiple months and I have put them through literally everything and anything you can think of. I really love these ESCs and stack, they are super durable. And for the video system and control system, we're gonna be using the Cadex Air Unit. I designed my frame to fit an air unit because I, I really prefer the air unit, so that's what we're gonna be using for this build. First, we're gonna start off with the frame assembly. We have our arm screws and we have our standoff slash motor screws. And you're gonna grab your bottom plate, your brace plate, and one arm. And I only grab one arm to start it off so it's easier to thread. And I kind of make a little sandwich to line up the holes. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way because I, it just makes it easier when I'm getting the rest of the arms on. To mount each arm, there are two screws per arm, so I have basically eight in total. This middle screw is not a mounting for the arm, it's actually a cutout for your stack screw. And one thing that I really like about this design is that I can remove the arm without having to take out my stack screws. To know which way the arms go, you're going to have the more motor protection going facing forward and backwards. So it'll look something like that. All right, so for, uh, for mounting the motor, it's pretty simple. I just put my motor on right there. Oh, you see that? You guys see that? It's a little hex. You know what, you know what that is? It's a prop tool. It's pretty sick. If you break an arm, you got a spare prop tool lying around that you can use to uh, tighten on your motors. Mounting the motors, it's pretty simple. I just go ahead and take my motor and I'm gonna place it like that. Usually I like to get one screw into the quad skid beforehand just so I'm not fumbling around. If you can see, there is a, a little arrow right there on the quad skid and basically that tells you which way to put it. So it's going to be pointing outwards of the arm. I don't know if you can see that right there. Personally, I really like to run skids. It just gives me like, a sense of like safety when I'm landing that I'm not just grinding out these screws. So for the motor screws, I'll usually start off with the top two just so that it is fixed. And then from there, I'll do the bottom two screws. All right, so we got our motor on one of the arms. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the three arms. So now that we have our motors on, I, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and mount my air unit because I run my camera cable that goes from the camera to the air unit under the stack, so it's nice to have that on prior to mounting the stack. This is a DJI air unit with the OG DJI camera. You can't get it anywhere else right now except for rotoriot.com. So we're gonna grab our antenna mount. This is, uh, I designed this to be really short and stubby next to the frame because I think when you have antennas that go out really long, it's just easier for them to break. When I was designing this frame, the biggest thing that I wanted was maximum durability and uh, just having everything more compact really achieves that. We're gonna go ahead and grab the one of the shorter screws, which is the same size as the motor screw, and we're gonna go ahead and mount our standoffs. We have teal standoffs because the color vibe that I was trying to go for this Moxie frame is pink and teal, and I think it just looks so good. We're gonna go ahead and put the back two standoffs on. So my frame has camera plates, so the way to know the back is the side without the camera plates holes. Or basically, you'll see a little 20 by 20 M2 stack. This is if you wanna run a DJI Vista. This is the backside. Grab our little antenna spacers, and these basically just prevent this antenna mount from sliding up and down. I'm gonna slide this over the standoff. Kapew. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my DJI antennas. So for this antenna mount, you can actually run it up either way. It's the same, but there's one little side that has that protrudes back a little bit. I like to run it on that side up just because I think it looks a little bit better. So I like to thread the top one first and I don't wanna push it all the way in yet. When I'm pushing these in, I wanna make sure that the 
MMCX part of the antenna is facing downwards because in the end I'm going to end up flipping it over and it just makes it easier to mount to the actual air unit and it doesn't add stress on the connectors. And that's like one of the biggest things that I think really is good for these types of mounts where the air unit is pushed right against the back. There's not any stress on the actual connectors so it's less likely to break. I don't know if you guys have ever broken an MMCX in the air unit but it's a pain to get out so this type of antenna mount prevents it. It should look something like that with both of the MMCXs facing downward. I actually run my air unit upside down because when you um, mount your MMCXs like this, there's like a little bit of strain on the connection from this over, there's like a little overlip there. I don't know if you can see that. So I like to run it upside down to eliminate all that. I'm going to go ahead and take our double-sided sticky tape. Make sure you get the one that has foam so it's like, can kind of go into the grooves and make it seat extra well. Match it up relatively well there. We're gonna go ahead and, and take our connector for our DJ air unit and we're gonna go ahead and put that in before we mount our air unit because once we have the whole little package here of the air unit, it's gonna be really hard to get the connector in. So I like to have it clipped in. See, did you guys hear that? Hold up. Yeah, it's not gonna come out. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look up something like that. We're gonna go ahead and bend our antennas the coaxial cable like this because this is how they're going to end up mounting just to get them in the general shape and I actually like to go ahead and mount uh, and plug in the MMCX's right now before I even mount it just as, I think it's easier once it's a uh, like all free floating you can just kind of plop it down like that so take your cable make sure it's not going under you're going to want to run it in between these coax cables so let's go ahead and remove our double sided sticky tape Satisfying. All right, so be relatively careful. You kind of want to have it seated at the right place the first time just so you don't have to move it around. So one thing I really like to have is the MMCX part right here butted right up against the TPU. This basically allows it to not unplug. So I'm going to push it against it as I press my air unit down. There we go. So that air unit is on there pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this antenna mount and slide it over the standoffs. And so you're, you're noticing right now how some of these, the coax cable is kind of protruding over where the top plate will be. Um, it's not really a big deal. The top plate will just push it down. So I'm going to grab some electrical tape now and uh, just wrap the front half of the air unit because if you notice, the back half of the air unit has um, a USB-C port and your bind button, and I do not want to cover those up. From there, I'm going to go ahead and wrap just the front half of the air unit with electrical tape. As I mentioned earlier, you don't have to take off the arms to put the stack screw through. I'm using uh, um, 25 millimeter M3 screws for my stack. It fits just perfectly to be right under the, the top plate, and it gives me a lot of room to mount my stack. And like one thing that really annoys me is having like a slammed build. Frustrating for me to build, so I made these 25 millimeters high which is pretty standard, um, but just really easy to build for anyone. So if you're a beginner or if you're a pro pilot or whatever, uh, this frame is good and easy to build for you. To get this started, we're going to go ahead and take this screw right there, hold it like this. You're going to want to make sure that you get these M3 nylock nuts so that when you tighten it all the way down, your stack is not going to be jiggling all over the place. So I'm just going to use some pliers to hold this part down, stand it up on its side. I'm going to go ahead and just screw it all the way down. Perfect. So now that we have the stack screws on there, these are not moving, these are solid. I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this aside for right now and we're gonna grab our Foxy Reaper ESC and we're gonna go ahead and tin all these pads. I usually use 6337 um, leaded rosin core solder, which basically has some flux in it. Put it down on the pad and then we're gonna add solder to the pad. When you kind of see that it's flowing. What I mean by flowing is it looks really shiny and like that. <laughs> All right, so now that we have all of our motor pads tinned, we're gonna go ahead and move here. We're gonna go ahead and grab a capacitor. So I really like this capacitor. This is the uh, 1000 microfarad 35 volt. And this one doesn't come with the Fox Hair stack, but you can pick this one up at the Road Riot store. You see these little holes in the Fox Hair stack? Those are meant for your capacitor to go in, put this in. Oh, and the right way to know it is the capacitor side with this little stripe is ground. So in this case, Fox ear stack, this side is ground, so we're going to go ahead and place it in there. All right, then I'm just going to go ahead and push it through as much as I can. I'm going to go ahead and snip. 
For tinning these power lead pads, it's basically the same as the motor pads. I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the tip. Maybe a little bit more because the pad's bigger, so it's gonna take more to heat it up. If it goes into those two components, it is 100% fine. This has happened to me on all of my builds and I have not had an issue yet. The Foxier ESC comes with this little baggie and you'll notice some little gummies in here. And I prefer to use these ones. So there's two types of gummies. There are these bigger ones and then these smaller ones. I like to use the bigger ones just because it provides a little bit more space underneath the ESC for the DJI camera cable to go through. To get these in, sometimes kind of a pain, but I kind of like to just squeeze it like that, push it through, and kind of shove it in there with my fingernail. Now we're gonna go ahead and do this for all three. So that is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this frame again. And okay, so it's coming with this one little white cable. You're gonna need this, don't lose this, it only comes with one. I'm gonna put this in a safe place. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my frame which has these stack screws. And I'm gonna put the ESC on. I'm not putting it on permanently right now. I'm just gonna put it on so it makes it easier when I am trying to um, attach my battery lead. They come pre-soldered, um, but I like to put some fresh solder on there. I think it just helps everything flow together if you're gonna be using the same solder. All right, there we go. So I like to just, once they're on there, give it a little tug test. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> See that that is good, it's not coming off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take off the ESC that we just put on. So I like to go ahead and run my DJI Air Unit camera under the stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this here now. Let me get my ESC. I'm gonna test right now to make sure there's enough room for the flight controller. So I'm gonna get the flight controller, get once again the bigger gummies, not the smaller gummies. This is gonna go on the bottom of the flight controller or the top side of the flight controller is the one that has the little arrow right there. So I really like this Foxier flight controller. It's an S722 and it has an MPU6000 uh, Gyro, I think is what it's called. It's easier to tune from what I've heard from my tuning friends, and it's just overall really rock solid. All right, so I just wanna go ahead and test. Yep, perfect. So this is gonna leave us with just enough room to get our last little screws on there once we're done soldering all this stuff up. All right, so for my motor wires, I really like these motor wire protection. Take your motor wire, slide this thing through, and then it's gonna go on something like that. It makes it look really clean and really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all four motors. Obviously the motor wire is a really long for where the motor pads are. So I wanna take my snippies and I'm gonna try to line it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and snip. And what I did there was I moved the wire back a little bit so I have some extra slack so it's not super taut. So now I'm gonna go ahead and strip these wires. People usually use wire strippers but I just use these little wire cutters. Just basically cut down, but not all the way. Then rip up, and grab our soldering iron, and just tin these. And the process is pretty similar to tinning the pads. There's not really a right or wrong direction or like order to put these motor wires in. I just line it up straight ahead, and then in software, I will change the direction of the motor. Boom. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take our little cable that we got with our flight controller and ESC. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Good plunk. There we go, it's seated in there pretty well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my flight controller. I'm gonna plug it in. Go ahead and plop the flight controller on. There we go. I really like that the uh, the Fox Air stack comes with a, a really short cable. It just makes everything look a lot cleaner in my opinion. For the DJI Air unit, I use two UARTs, one for my MSP, which basically allows me to control uh, my PID and my rates all in the goggles, and then I also need an S bus pad, which is another UART, which allows me to use controlling, because I use a DJI radio. First thing I looked up when I searched up DJI air unit wiring diagrams, rotorite.com. When you're doing this, you'll probably also want to pull this up just to make sure 100% that you're doing it right, which is, I did it too, because I, I always forget these wire diagrams. So we're gonna solder our ground, our power, TX5, RX5, and RC, and ground. This DJI silicon, it's not silicon cable, but the DJI cable, the stuff they have around it, when I put it to heat, the things around it, they melt and they like shrink. You can buy in the Rotorat store, they have a this exact cable, but it's made of silicon, which basically means that it won't 
shrink up like this. It's good cable. It's, you don't have to worry about it. It's normal cable. You can peel it apart. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier with all the other wires we used. Let's just strip it and tin it. I like to be really, really quick with this because I do not want the wire shrinking. So touch, tinned, touch, tinned. Yeah, because if you hold the heat on there any longer than you know a couple seconds, the whole wire will just shrink. Ground is the first black one right next to the red one. So see right there, it happened where the wire like melted it's away. a lot of exposed wire. Yeah, so for something like that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that part off and just redo that. So I'm gonna cut off all the part that was bad there. Make sure I still have enough room, which is good I do. There we go. There we go. Looks better. So the order of the wires is power, ground, you want RX. So for this case, RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX, basically saying that the UART TX on the air unit is going to be transmitting to the receiver side on the flight controller. So TX goes to RX, RX goes to TX, that's how it always is. So this white cable right here is an RX, so this is going to go ahead and go to TX, which is conveniently the next pad over. So next we have UART. TX, so this is going to go to RX. Okay, so from here, this last yellow wire is going to be our control link or our S bus. It's going to go to S bus. Then last but not least, ground, and boom. That is it of the soldering. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a plug-in test. All right, so the reason you didn't hear the last two beeps is because right now in beta flight, there is no like ESC configuration set up. It's perfectly fine, the flight controller powered up, so I'm not worried about the last two flight controller beeps not going. Hey guys, Bubby from the future here. I forgot something. Okay, so it's basically done, but uh, I forgot to put these little these little uh, nuts on top of the stack to, um, to keep the flight controller down. Basically, don't forget to do it. Do it while the build is open so you don't have to take apart your quad. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head and put the rest of the standoffs on. So we're gonna take our little screws two millimeter driver and start off with using these two, the ones that are behind the camera plates. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get the front two, which are these two right there, right there on. So we got the standoffs on. Now we're gonna take our two camera plates and we're gonna plop them in this way and this way so that the little nub on top is facing forward. And you can see how there's a cutout in the back right there. I actually designed that for the XC60 to come out of. It'll come out something like that. You're gonna take your two little camera 3D printed mounts and you're gonna to wanna to put it on the inside so that the, uh, the f shiny flat side is facing the inside, if that makes sense, like that. So basically these 3D prints allow you to mount your FPV camera. I really like having 3D prints hold my camera in because in slight crashes or hard crashes, um, there's a little bit of give, so you're not gonna be cracking this case. The camera mounts that come with the Moxie frame only have one screw hole in them. That's because DJI seems to be moving towards more cameras that have only one hole instead of two. You can print your own or you can buy your own that have two holes for the DJI camera. When you're mounting your camera, make sure that the little arrow on the back of the DJI camera is facing up. That lets you know that this is the top and that's the bottom. It really doesn't matter all that much because after in, in the DJI goggles, you can change the orientation, but I like to get it right the first time so I don't have to do as much work later. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way down right now so I can adjust the camera angle later. Before we put the top plate on, we're gonna take two zip ties and zip tie the battery lead to this standoff right here. I zip tie them to the standoff so that it provides some tension relief. So in a crash, when the battery unplugs and pulls, it's not pulling on the pads. This is the top plate right here. And this is the front side that has the two FPV camera plate slots. They're gonna slide in just like that. I personally run a spoiler. I'll share the STL, it'll be in the description, or you can buy them from the store. It just goes on the top of the back standoffs. So the Moxie frame kit does not come with a spoiler. Um, you can buy it in the Rotorite store, the spoiler by itself. But if you buy this Prospec build, um, it does come with a spoiler on it. All right, so that's on. We're gonna go ahead and take these screws for the top plate and do the front two now. All right, there we go. And so you'll see this here. This is for a standoff horizontally to mount your GoPro mount. So I'm gonna take my 25 degree GoPro mount because that's what I fly. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the standoff through there to push it down. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it down 
like that. And I like to start mounting the GoPro with these screws in the back first. You should probably use washers. Um, I don't have any on me right now, and I'll probably add some later. Um, but washers for the back of these just to help it not you know, rip and crashes or whatever. I'm gonna take our other two screws and screw it in to the horizontal standoff. Before I do anything else, I always like to just go around and make sure that I have everything tightened up because, you know, the last thing you want is for you to go out and fly your new build and find out that, hey, there's a motor screw missing or there's a motor screw loose and have your quad just fall out of the sky. The Moxie frame will come with this battery pad. This battery pad is awesome. I absolutely love it. It, like, fits the shape of the frame better. Personally, I like to use this. This is a, a Rotoriot battery pad, but it's just a little bit extra sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it to the shape of the top plate there. Sweet. So if you guys have spare arms or broken arms, you have prop tools for days. Right here, guys. See? Prop tool. So the prop that I'm running is the HQ J37 prop, and I have them set for props in because that's what I run. Props in basically means that the props are spinning in towards the nose on this side and towards the butt on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and use a prop tool. I'll tighten this one down. And I'm gonna take one of my Rotorite Tough battery straps. I really enjoy these battery straps, but I haven't broken one yet. Look at this. See that, guys? All thanks to that special sticky Rotorite grip. And kaboom, finished Bubby FPV Moxie frame. Guys, thank you so much for watching this build video. If you want to pick up this pre-built, you can go to the Rotoriot store and they have this exact drone pre-built so you don't have to do any of the work. Also, if you want to, you can build it yourself and you can buy all of the parts that I used today in this build at the store. Anything you need, they got it. And we'll have a dump for this exact quad in the description. And it'll also be up on the Rotorite store, or if not, my PIDs and rates and filters and configuration are already on the store. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Rotorite. See you guys later.